welcome back to the Citizen Channel. We're all staying safe and well on another episode of the streets around Main Road. Yes, I think this might be episode ten. I'm losing track now as we get towards the uh, yeah get towards the end of these streets. In 1977, the Manchester City Council named a number of streets in the new estate in Moss Side after famous city players. So we've been looking at the the, the, the places, the roads, uh, we're looking at a close today and obviously the, the player involved. So we've already looked at legends, Horace Barnes, Eric Brook, Sammy Cookson, Sam Cowan, Tommy Johnson, Jimmy McMullen, Billy Meredith, Frank Swift and Fred Tilson. So today we're going over to Tommy Browell Close. Browell, Browell Close. We'll call it Browell, Tommy Browell. And that's what we're going to look at today. Please, if you are new to the channel, please push that subscribe button. Push the bell notifications, it'd be great to have you on board. Spread the word, everything city, of course, city past, present, and, well, forever, as long as little little old me keeps going, that's for sure, anyway. So, uh, hope you can do that, please. Uh, jump on board, and if you can, uh, give us a little thumbs up, guys. I'm trying to get about 20 likes, if I can, for these history vlogs. If you can get me up to that little target. I'll be very appreciative, this little History Boys special, of course. Right, let's have a look at Tommy Browell. Tommy Browell Browell. Let's call him Tommy, I think. Once it might be a little bit easier, but uh, hey, I'm sure we'll, we'll sure we'll get through. His career for City spanned, yes, one of the earlier legends, 1913 to 1925. He was born in Walbottle, Northumberland, up near Newcastle, in the, on the 19th of October, 1892. Before he came to City, he started his career with Hull, yes, uh, who were then in the Football League Second Division, who also had Browell's two brothers on the book, so it's a family affair, really. But Hull, he gained the, gained the nickname Boy. Now, there's a little bit of a disagreement with this. Most most tomes uh, put this down to playing against a certain team, and some other one, I think I've read about six different things. Five, five picked one and one picked the other. So what they're saying is, uh, there was a disagreement over so this was after a game at Boundary Park uh, when he was just 16, he scored both goals in a 2-0 win or indeed it was after a hat-trick against Stockport County so yeah, right right neck of the woods obviously uh, Oldham and Stockport but there's a bit of confusion and it was claimed that the next day the back page of the local paper read 10 men and a boy beat Oldham or 10 men and a boy beat Stockport depending on who you believe but I'm, I'm going for Stockport because most of them are most of them are going for that so a hey, history it's it's a weird thing isn't it but of course which whichever whichever you believe I mean either way either the way he got the nickname boy so obviously that was his nickname that stuck through stuck to him throughout his career a year later, a year later, he was signed by First Division Everton for a fee of £1,650. And despite only playing half the season for Everton, uh, Browell finished as Everton's top scorer in the 1911-12 season. In two years at Everton, he scored 36 goals in 60 appearances, including two FA Cup hat-tricks. Scored a few hat tricks throughout his career, and he got a few more than that as well. He got, he got five in a game, but we'll talk about that later. As I'm recording this, a certain uh, a certain Mr. Hall has just got recently got five as well. But hey, there you go. But after a disagreement at Everton, to their dismay, he requested a transfer. He wasn't happy. One Everton director said at the time, Browell is one of the most brilliant forwards Everton have ever had. I think City have made the most brilliant capture in years. He will prove me right with lots of goals. So what happened at City? He came to City on the 31st of October 1913. Halloween. Yes, Halloween. He certainly give defences a bit, a few scares. That was for sure. And manager at the time, Ernie Magnell, was a great admirer, as of course that Everton director was that we just talked about. And he was purchased uh, again. There's a couple of different prices quoted, but but let's let's go for one thousand seven hundred and eighty pounds. The first time uh, that City had actually paid over a thousand for a, a player. So uh, yeah, a big investment. He scored on his City debut against the Wednesday. Though we did lose that match 2-1. And two seasons into his time in Manchester, of course, we had the outbreak of World War One, which suspended all football for a four-year period. In that uh, two seasons, he started 45 games and scored 15 goals. So not bad, not a bad return. 
when matches resumed in 1919, Bravel would form a, a prolific goal-scoring partnership with another streets around Main Road legend, uh, Horace Barnes, which we've already already covered in in this uh, in this feature. In season 1920, he scored 22 goals in 32 appearances. In the 2021 season. We came close, we finished runners-up in the league, uh, so came close to our first title, and Browell set a career best of 31 goals in 42 league games, the first time ever that a City player had, had scored more than 30 goals in a season. Horace Barnes and himself and uh, Browell scored a total of 41 of City's 63 league goals in season 21-22. Browell got 21, Barnes with just 20. And I believe Barnes, I think, set Browell up for that uh, one more goal as well. At, uh, so they didn't count assists in those days, so uh, we don't we have no assist figures whatsoever. Browell also scored five in just three FA Cup games. He'd been, yeah, when he first came to this, he had a bit of an injury. Then he he picked up a a badly sprained ankle tendon injury, which meant he missed all but 15 games of the 22-23 final season at Hyde Road, of course, before we moved to Main Road. And he managed to just score the three goals. And he actually missed the very first main road game through injury. And this ankle injury was to plague him. He also struggled appearances in the 23, 24 and 24, 25 seasons, making only 14 league appearances in each. He managed to get four league goals in 23, 24 and six in 24, 25. And during the run to the 23-24 FA Cup semi-final, we got beat by Newcastle. He did manage five games and four goals. But in the 25-26 season, though things improved and his health-wise, injury-wise, his persistence seemed to look as though it might get rewarded in the best possible way. We'll more of that in a second. He made a total of 37 league and cup appearances that season. And of course, City enjoyed a run to the FA Cup final, in which Browell was an influential figure, scoring seven times, including a hat-trick in the 11-4. Uh, very famous. You've probably seen it every time we play Crystal Palace. It always seems to get uh, get mentioned. 11-4 defeat of Crystal Palace and two goals in the first half hour of the semi-final against Manchester United. Sadly, we lost the final, which was won just 1-0 by Bolton. Browell was, along with other City players, uh, frequently denied by the heroics of Bolton keeper Dick Pym. A tremendous save from a particular Browell effort that seemed goal-bound brought this reaction from Tommy Browell. He said, Browell said after the game, must have left, he must have left his fingernails uncut for six months to make that save. To compound the misfortune for Browell and City, City were also relegated. This is where the same typical City was first muted to have, have happened in this season. City were actually relegated to the second division on the final day of the season, although all the odds seemed in our favour. Uh, we, we all They all combined for us to get relegated. We lost to Newcastle United, away at Newcastle United, despite a Tommy Browell goal. City had become the first ever FA Cup finalist to be relegated in the same season. So there you go, a typical City. That season, though, Browell had hit five as well in an 8-3 victory over Burnley at Main Road and four in a 4-4 Main Road draw with his previous employers, Everton. City had been losing 4-1 at half-time and he scored 21 league goals in what would be his last season. Browell had led the City season goal-scoring charts on five occasions during his stay. After City, well, that relegation for City resulted in changes of personnel and Browell was transferred for £1,100 to Blackpool. Still quite a lot of money uh, so many years later, of course. Browell was released by Blackpool at the age of 38. He remained in the Fylde Coast area, joining Lytham as a player coach. He also went on to coach Morecambe. After football, upon retiring, he became very popular. Yes, he became very popular on the trams. Yeah, he became a tram driver in Blackpool and was, uh, yes, uh, an interesting character doing that as well. His appearances for City, he managed 225 league appearances and 25 cup appearances, so a total of 247. And he scored 122 league goals and 17 cup goals, so a total of 139. So if not for the war and various injuries problems throughout his, his career, uh, and when, you know, that, that figure would have been, you know, could have certainly easily broken the 200 mark, something like, or certainly got near to the 200 mark. Who knows what he might have done. 
sadly died on the 5th of October 1955, aged 64, at his home in Blackpool. So there you go, Tommy Browell. So that's a little bit about him. Thanks for joining me for this little look. Uh, incredible, I think. Yeah, as I said, uh, despite despite season's uh, dog by injury, the war uh, taking four years out of the four years out of his career, uh, a, a magnificent achievement to score 139 goals in, in total. A true footballing legend and city hero from a long, long time ago, Tommy Browell. Join me next time when we'll look at another. I won't ask you about your memories of Tommy Browell unless you've been told about it by your granddads or your dads or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that's what I'd normally do in something like this. Let me know your memories. But, uh, obviously, I have I have not, none whatsoever. Uh, certainly none from my dad or my granddad who... Uh, uh, I was, that, I was that young when my granddad died. I don't even remember having conversations about football. I don't even know if he liked football, in all fairness. But uh, as I say, uh, any anything you, you're aware of, just uh, give us a shout. It'd be great to hear from you. And join me next time. We'll look at another one. I think there's two or three. I think there's certainly two more to go. Uh, there could be three. I'm not too sure, but I'm, I'm losing track of how many there are now. So uh, join me next time and we'll look at another city legend from around the streets of Main Road and have a look back at some of the others have done as well. So uh, if you put it in, into my uh, YouTube uh, channel, put a search for the names, uh, it'll, it should come up for you. Any problems, just let us know and I'll sort you out. Thanks for watching, guys. Until we meet again, that's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.